Hello, my name is Moira, and today I'm going to show you how to make a vagabond stove and a buddy burner. What you'll need for this creative project are pliers, a church key, scissors to cut your cardboard, which is what you will also need, cardboard. You'll cut your cardboard into strips. You will need wax. It can be canning wax, or if you don't have canning wax, uh, maybe you'll have an old candle lying around somewhere. I know my grandma probably does. Um, you will need a can about a big metal can and a small can about the size of a tuna can. It needs to be smaller than the big than the bigger one. Um, you'll need the church key to prick, to prick holes in the um, big can that which is for your vagabond stove. And you only, and not not pricking a hole at the top because that will be your cooking surface. You poke holes on the sides, eight holes next to this platform right here. So eight holes. Try to make it even evenly spaced, but not all on one side. On the top and four holes, ex ki kind of like the eight holes on the top, but on the bottom. Um, the pliers are for the cut metal that you will be that you will cut out when you prick the holes. So, um, I'm not sure if you can see, it's kind of bright out here, but uh, my mom um, bent bent the four cut metal hole pieces, something like that, um, on the rim of the can. It's still sharp, you still have to be careful, and you'll need adult supervision or an adult's doing it for you if you are under the age of 18, most likely. So I'm going to show you how to make a buddy burner. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you why you need the holes. It lets oxygen out because, well, how, how will you cook over this without a heat source? You're going to make a buddy, buddy burner and it is going to burn. So you'll need the holes to let the oxygen in so the fire can burn because if you didn't have any holes, there wouldn't be any oxygen for the fire and the fire wouldn't light. So you you take your cardboard pieces, make, make sure that your cardboard isn't, well, the width of your cardboard isn't the same as that, is the same or, or well, similar to the height of, of your can. You'll want to bend it but a little bit, but not too much. Just to like put it, in rings in, in your can. Um, so one way you can do it is just like putting it in there like this. Just like wrapping it in there yourself. Or how my mom likes to do it is you like literally do it before you put it in here inside the can, which I'm not sure if it's better, but I, but but I think this one saves a, lo a little more time. So you'll want to bend it just a little bit like this. Not like too much like this because I, I don't think that would work properly. Um, give me a sec. So you'll want to just like bend it but not, like I said, not too much. And then you can put it in. Don't like put it directly right there where you stopped the last time. Do it a little over that, just to make sure you get it in there correctly. Um, you'll want to use a pretty thin box for this. Not lo not like a thin, like a really thin, just like kind of like this. Not a thick box, which can be at least that big. You'll want it to be small, but not too small. Thin, but not too thin, I meant. Um, so you just do this a couple of times until it's pretty tight, but around and around. Um, then after you were, you'd be done with this, you cut out a wick. Not like a string wick, we don't have any string. You'd use like another cardboard, and I'll just show you how to do it in a minute. I need to finish this first. Where did I stop? I don't see where I stopped. Oh yeah, I see where I stopped. Never mind. Um, so you'll just keep wrapping it around until you have it kind of pretty much closed, and it 
So you don't want it too tight or else you wouldn't want, you couldn't get the wick in there. But you want it tight enough that nothing falls out, I guess. So maybe a little more. I'll just cut off this because it's pretty skinny. Maybe I'll want it a little thicker. So I'm going to use this. No, I'm not. I think this would be a perfect size. So I'll just spend this a little more than it already was. And I think that would be about it. And I'll probably use the end of the same one to make the wick. Um, the wick is what you would light. Um, and of course you wouldn't burn it without wax. I mean, that is why we have wax. You would pour it in melted. You'll also need a pot for this, but uh, it's mine is inside. I can't go get it right now because I am showing you how to do this. Um, so if you have to cut off anything and add it, and it's too long, you might want to cut it off some more. I think this is a bit too long. So cut off about an inch. I think that's an inch of it. And just put it in that way. Give me a second. This is a little hard. This is kind of tricky. I'm just going to do it outside of the can because that is really hard. Okay, so it look about like that. Now you would make a wick. I'm just going to use this part that I cut off of the other one. You, hang on. You don't want it too thick, or at least I don't think you would. About maybe that size, it's pretty small. Um, you would, I might have to cut off a little more because it won't fit. That was my fault. Okay, I want a bigger, a bigger piece, so I'm just going to cut off one like this. You want, you'll want it a little taller than what you've made here, so the fire doesn't catch it all. I don't think you want the fire to catch it all at one time. You want it to last for a while. Um, you don't want it over. You don't want all of this too far up, like say about that far up. Or for or like a little lower maybe like that maybe just like that far up you don't want it higher than the can itself because that would cause a fire hazard or and the can and it would get too high and probably burn whatever you're cooking or just saying you're cooking over it without a va vagabond stove it would just probably catch something on fire it's a big fire hazard no one wants a fire hazard Wherever you are, you don't want a fire hazard. Um, so you stick that in there. I might need to cut off something real quick. I think that would be about it. Um, and maybe just a little. I think that's it. Is that good, Mom? That's good. Okay, thanks. Um, so instead of like, I'm going to show you how not or how to and how not to prick a hole in this, but we've already done it, mainly because I'm weak. <laughs> um, so you wouldn't do this like on top because again, this is where you're going to be cooking people. It just wouldn't be really smart. So you'd want to like use it in the opposite direction and use the bump right there, the little hook, and put it on the rim and just press it that way. And you won't need the um, pliers for the top because it will already be bent in. And you, so you don't, you don't really have to worry about that. Um, is that it? Yeah, uh, we'll be back in a minute because we're gonna go inside and we'll show you how we add the wax. Yeah, you'll need adult supervision for this too. It's most likely going to be really hot. So here we are inside. And we've already completed one buddy burner, melting two bl two block bars blocks whatever, of the ca canning canning wax, and um, now we're just letting one of them harden. We're going to complete the one that we sh that we did outside, um, by melt using the rest of the wax and pouring it in. 
you have to be very careful and um, you don't want to you don't really want to spill any it look kind of purplish after um, and I'd say you'd have to wait overnight to wait for the wax to harden um, apparently we didn't have enough wax right now so we will melt some more yeah so we will melt some more okay we've added some a little extra melted wax to the buddy burner that we did outside um we'll go, we're going to let them solidify overnight and later we're going to show you how to how to use your vagabond stove and your buddy burner to cook breakfast see you later hey again um we're going to be making french toast and bacon on our buddy burners so get your vagabond stoves your buddy burners that we create that we prepared in the last video and you might want to get some lighters, some utensils, of course, raw bacon and bread. Of course, plates too. We're making breakfast. Um, so if you do start cooking, you want to start cooking the bacon first because of the grease. So the bread won't stick to where the, the, the vagabond, the top of the vagabond stove, where we're cooking. That would just, it wouldn't turn out very well. So, um... So now we've got our egg mixture and we're gonna soak our bread a little bit. Because our bacon is done and you can cook it to the consistency that you like. And we're just gonna throw that on top and let it sizzle and brown and get all yummy. And then we'll have our breakfast. So we've already made our breakfast we burnt a little bacon, but I tasted it's pretty good. And um, the French bread, it's delicious. I love it. And now we're going to put our buddy burners out. So you're gonna make sure that you don't, try not to have a whole lot of grease left on top. Yeah. Um, get yeah. an adult to do this. We're gonna need gloves. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a lot of fire. You can turn it upside down. That's not gonna work this time. I think it did last time. Yes. Oh, yay, we're using my mess cup. This is why I like metal mess kits. I think it's stainless steel. It really works on a grease fire, I think, or any fire. So basically, you're going to put your buddy burner out by suffocating the flame. The flame, which this isn't working too well today. And that's how we do it. Thanks for watching.